What's going on guys, Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. We're gonna keep looking at the Game Case. I mean, you guys like the videos. Let's keep looking at it and, you know, tell you why I really like it. So again guys, we got Sims Arcade right next to me. Um, again, taking this whole time to make a series of videos and all that. Um, you know, Hyperspin is a totally different beast. You could take a look at my other video. I'm, I don't want to repeat myself, but you know, I'm just kind of happy and excited about how I made this one. Um, you know, you take into a lot of consideration how people act and how people react and use the system itself. So again, what's really cool is that this thing is totally portable. Whether you wanted to use the actual arcade sticks or whether you wanted to just take this on vacation, it's possible with this kind of setup. You could do a PC-based system, an actual PC desktop, which we are gonna do for somebody's bar top pretty soon. You'll see in, in the future, maybe in about maybe a week or two, um, we're gonna do an actual PC build. Um, same kind of concept, but it's no longer portable. Uh, the biggest thing as far as like the challenges with Hyperspin that you know you might not know, but Hyperspin is, it's, it's a whole nother headache. So Hyperspin, yes, it will give you a big headache, but anytime you can do a PC-based system, the outcome and the performance is way better than anything else. Especially if you use a high-end gaming laptop or high-end gaming PC. I mean, the possibilities are endless on this thing. So right now, keep in mind, we are using a cheap laptop. I'm not gonna BS it. I could even post a link to the Micro Center. But basically, this is about a $275 laptop. It's a Dell Core i3. Um, this one has six gigs of RAM or eight. I don't really remember. I'll post it down below. Um, that's really it. Uh, and one terabyte hard drive inside of it. So for what it is and what you're gonna see in this video, you know, in all videos about like how it plays with PS2, it's pretty amazing how, you know, you could use a pretty, you know, standard laptop to use emulation. But keep in mind, again, I'm gonna exaggerate it, especially with some PC games, such as Street Fighter V. It'll play Street Fighter IV pretty good, but Street Fighter V, you need to lower the graphics to the low end, like low, low end. Um, every day I do upgrade my hard drives. Every day I'm always looking for new PC games, to be honest. As far as like the emulation with like SNES and the NES, that's already done. Um, the only next ones that I'm really waiting for is like the PS3 emulator to be better. There is a Nintendo Switch emulator coming out, but they're still working on King, so it's too early in the phase for that. But for right now, I'm doing a lot, a lot of PC games. Right now the date is March 25. Literally yesterday I loaded up, there's a brand new Roller Coaster Tycoon game that came out. I'm a big fan of Roller Coaster Tycoon, especially the earlier ends. So this one does have Roller Coaster Tycoon Adventures. And the most recent game, which everybody's going crazy for, um, it doesn't play well on this though, I'll be honest. It doesn't play well, but again, depending on what system you buy from me, whether maybe you wanna up you know, the performance of the laptop, um, I just downloaded, it's a very popular game, and people say it's a very difficult game. So the new game that we just did was Sekiro Shadow Die Twice. Um, literally brand new. Check this out, we're gonna boot it up real quick. So, again, this is the thing, where hyperspin drives that they'll sell you online, they'll sell you these games, but some games don't boot. I'm gonna boot this up right now, this is literally a brand new game, this is a very intense graphic game, I'll be honest, this is... This is like, I'm even shocked that the computer actually boots it up. But check it out. Again, every day, like literally every day or every other day, um, you know, I go on sites and I do find the new upcoming games. I'm really waiting for the new Trials game to come out because it's a fun game. But basically, you know, I try to update my drive every way I can. It's most likely the PC games. The PC games are the ones that really get more updated and more recent because it's a PC. A PC game will run on a PC. So again, just real quick to show you, we're gonna make a video about talking about other people's hard drives. I mean, I, again, there you go, there's the game. So this, we're gonna unmute. I tried playing it yesterday, but it was very choppy. It didn't really, it wasn't really that good. Again, this is an i3 computer. Um, we're gonna talk about another episode like talking about how people sell hard drives and hyperspin drives and what you have to be careful of. In all honesty, I've always started my hyperspin drive and I actually, you know, you could take a look back at my videos with um, Oliver's Arcade. Oliver's Arcade, he actually bought a drive from like eBay and sure enough, the drive didn't work. It was actually really bad. 
it wasn't for it wasn't really like programmed correctly especially on hyperspin then so you got to keep that in mind you got to be careful i get that a lot message me people message me oh vic i have a hyperspin drive hyperspin i don't want to deal with it because i had you know bad experience in the past it's all about whoever makes the drive and whoever did it right but no hyperspin is ever perfect so basically that people don't understand is that when you program hyperspin right when you program an emulator to a certain controller um you got to keep in mind that each controller is different um you know uh basically again when i created this drive it was really meant to be portable so the one thing i had to keep in mind was that i needed to configure the system to not only work with the arcade sticks but to also work with the controllers which in this case are the xbox 360 controllers so what i'm going to tell you real quick we're going to talk about mam arcade real quick mam arcade is set um to buttons so when you do if you ever you know went and dabbled on mam and you tried to do the edit configurations mam works on like you know button one equals button one button two button three and all that so one two three four five six regular stuff right but when you do actually load up a controller for example this specific controller here it kind of changes a little bit for example we have button one two three four five and six so in reality like the way the arcade sticks are like when you do street fighter it should be punch 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 on the l1 kick 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 on the r1 um the way my hyperspin setup is and how mam is on this one when you do an arcade game on the xbox 360 controller it's actually set to punch 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 kick 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 so some people might get a little like you know confused it's really just the arcade that does that but you know for you to really fix it correctly i mean there's really no way, other way to fix it we are talking about two separate controllers being used and you know that's how you have to have it wired up and how you have a config it's, at least for me that's how mam is config so it's set up by one two three four five six one two three four five six so real quick just to show you for an example let's load up our hyper spin drive i guess i'm going to talk about the mam arcade on this one and show you a couple of things um again one press just press the hyperspin button one time again my xbox 360 controller is not plugged in we are using the arcade sticks on this okay again i'm going to load up uh street fighter i always like to load up street fighter again one button press one button alone either button one or the green button i know i pressed it there you go loading complete so last time i spent maybe about an hour downloading bezels um i don't have bezels set on this which i'll do that in another video to turn on the bezel um but basically again we're going to talk about the buttons first so again got my coins we're going to do the player two start okay as far as like setting up i'm going to tell you how you could enlarge the screen but basically you press the tab button go to video options and basically for right now we could either do we could put the bezels on it or me personally i do like stretch full screen so you can do that that's up to you but basically again going back to what i said this again one two three all my punches up top kick 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 four five and six right so for example on an arcade right now this is perfect really set for punch 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 kick 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 right i'm gonna exit out real quick i'm gonna exit out totally and right now i'm gonna disconnect my zinmo just like that and now we're gonna reconnect our xbox controller dongle is connected player one will go you will hear a beep on the computer but i didn't mute it right now and again, we're gonna boot back up hyperspin. It's always good to exit and then re-enter it. Just makes your life easier like that. Again, one button press, one button only. We're gonna load the same game up. And like I said, I'll show you what I mean on this end, okay? So for this, cause I don't have, I actually don't have to. So for this, since I, you know, I have the one control on me right now, uh, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna actually pretend it's two players using the keyboard. But again, I could put my coins in. We're gonna let that skip. Button five. And we're gonna do player two start. I'm actually gonna use pretend. Uh, again, it's using joy to key. It's a keyboard input. So I'm, I know my keyboard presses, but real quick, just to load up a two player Street Fighter game on this. For example, like I said, one, two, and three, right? Check this out. One, 
two, three. My punches are here, and now my kicks are here. So again, the way this Xbox 360 is like wired and configured is that it's buttons one, two, three, four, five, six. In reality, if you see like my Raspberry Pi builds, my Hyper Pi builds, it's really uh, punch, 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 kick, kick, kick. That's how it usually is all the time. You can still throw a Hadouken. Again, we're using the joystick on this. It's not reading the D-pad. I could set out to read the D-pad, but in all honesty, I figured the joystick's better for arcade because it's an arcade, that's how it should be. But again, that's the only thing that one thing you, you'll keep in mind. So for example, if you wanted to do the kick, we could either, there you go, there it is right there. Finish them off with a Hadouken and a toss, boom, there you go. So that's really the only one. Man Arcade is the only one. And again, you know, I, I've been, I've been building this specific drive and all that for a long time. So I know exactly what I wanted. I wanted it that right now, again, I could literally go on the plane and literally right now we are able to still play and that's it. I don't need the actual suitcase with me. So again, I did build this in the way that, I mean, me personally, I put this on, I take this with me to the airport. Like when I go on vacation, I take this with me and I'm literally sitting and enjoying my arcade stuff on it. So I love it so much. Um, I do have um, L3 set to escape, which sometimes it could kick you in the butt, uh, which I'll show you in a video how you could delete it. But basically, L3 to exit out. Now again, MAM Arcade, the way I have it set up is that it's reading the coin button as like button 14 or button 15. There is no button 14 and 15 on the 360 controller. So what you would have to do is that you just have to press the number five, which is the coin, and number one is the start. That's really all it is. Other than that, again, the way I did create is that every other emulator, for example, let's do, uh, you saw in my other video, we did Super Nintendo, I believe. Yes, we did. Let's load up Super Nintendo and we're gonna load up the Super Mario World 3. Do, 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 do. Was it or it was the NES? It might've been the NES, I'm sorry. I'm gonna load up the NES. And again, I'll teach you guys the shortcuts on how to use it. But basically again, we're using Hyper Spin right now. We're gonna go into Super Mario. A, B, C, D, F, G, H, K, L, P. We're actually gonna go to T and then up. Right, Super Mario 3 is what we were playing before. Now again, my load and save on this are set to F key. So F5 is to save or load and F8 is to save or load. I don't really remember which one it was. So basically again, if I wanted to recap, I could reload where I was literally in that video that you saw in the other video, I was right there. And basically now, again, I am able to play some NES action right now with the Xbox 360 controllers. There we go, I'm gonna run it out, run it out. So again, the way I did this was that I kept in mind that I don't want a customer to like go and edit like emulation settings. I don't want that. I set this up and I, I sat there for a long time just to figure out how everything works. So again, this right now will work with the Xbox 360 controller. Again, right now, if I plug in the Zinmo, it will work with the Zinmo. So the customer, you, the customer, do not have to edit anything. You should not have to go into the emulator settings at all. I will show you a video of what the emulators are, and I do have a, a folder for the emulators, just in case, only because I made that video about the, um, the Wii, and if you wanted to use the Wii as that, but in all honesty, I didn't want to do that too much. But again, we have this thing set up so that most of the games, like again, for the Game Boy and the Game Boy Advance and the Game Boy Color, it will work with the Xbox 360 controller and it will work with the Zinmo. That's how I had this thing set up. Again, my main thing is my objective is like, I don't want customers to touch it too much. You shouldn't have to go into it and edit things. This, I mean, as like me, if I was a customer and when I buy something, I don't want to do that much. But again, I'm just making these videos just so people could see it again. We're right now playing the Game Boy, enjoying the Game Boy action on this. If I can enter, there we go. Start, there we go, look at this. Again, and we're gonna do, I'm gonna do it in this series, we're gonna do each individual system and what you do. So for example, right now the Game Boy is set to a four by three. So if you did want to enlarge it, you could enlarge it, that's up to you. And again, I'll show you how you couldn't enlarge it. It's pretty simple, it's not that difficult. It's just some people that I meet, they do not like the stretch screen on it. I get that, you don't have to like it. Um, it's just, you know, at least you know you could change it and all that. I'm done playing, we go L3 out. 
one more time and there we go we are back and again same thing with pinball we're gonna load a pinball real quick the pinball will work again with let's do a different one i notice i do like the simpsons a lot i like the systems i can't go wrong with the simpsons let's load up south park old school classic south park one button press i pressed it one time and i press it one time only Sometimes on pinball you do get like a, are you using this software kind of thing. So you will kind of press okay on that. There we go. And here we go. Again, using Xbox 360 controllers. I didn't have to change any setting on this. Same thing, joystick is to, joystick is to nudge. Sorry, we're back. I got called, but now we're back. Again, looking at pinball, playing with the Xbox 360 controller. We're gonna launch it. <laughs> Again, I had this thing set up. I specifically sit down and I figure everything out when it came to building this thing and especially building my drive. Um, a lot of stuff, it's just something to keep in mind. Um, Again, it'll load up the Ataris. I always do Centipede. Again, each console is set to read off of both controllers. Just keep in mind that like after like the Dreamcast, you can't use the arcade sticks. So for example, the GameCube will not work with the arcade sticks. It definitely will. Again, Atari 2600. I'm doing the joystick like that. You can kind of see how it is. Let's go. Board, exit out, L3 to exit out, bring it back. Let's see what else we got. PSP, we got PS2 running on this. Uh, let's do a PS2 game, just real quick. Um, some people like to see like Grand Theft Auto, for example. Again, just simple artwork on it. Let's do Grand Theft Auto, so that's G. Love me some Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto Vice City is the best one. We got Vice City and we got Vice City Stories. One button press and one button alone. Loading complete. Surprisingly, that loaded pretty fast. <laughs> like, there you go. Literally, PS2 action right now in the palm of my hand. And again, I could literally be in the airport right now. And that's it, we out, bye. Like, that's it, this is why I created this. Exactly why I created this. So. You don't have to always use the arcade sticks. You could actually bring this with you on vacation. Let the kids have fun on vacation. We're literally playing Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Um, basically, again, I could always exit out. Um, Vice City's intro is pretty too long. It's too long to show you. So I'm gonna exit out. We're back. And we are gonna make a whole video on how many games on each one. But again, you even do have PSP on this. Do. So like Grand Theft Auto on the PSP also, that's all there. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Bring it up. Grand Theft Auto Vice City Stories on the PSP right now. Loading complete. Load times on these are pretty good. I mean, again, you have the GameCube one, which has to be unzipped and uh, the PS1, we're gonna do the PS1 next too. Again, check it out. Grand Theft Auto Vice City Stories. This again, loaded pretty fast. Full screen on this. So some games will play full screen, some plays won't. I believe I have the emulator set to full screen on this because it's a PSP game. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's A-OK. -okay. Same thing, here we go. Gonna get on the bike. Again. I'm bored, L3 out. That is it, bring it back. Let's do a PS1 game. Resident Evils. I mean again, we're gonna make a whole list of how many games and all that and you know I can't really make a list of like what games are on it. There's just too many to list But we are in Grand Theft Auto mode. I showed you a lot of Grand Theft Auto. So let's bring it back to the old school Got Grand Theft Auto 1, Grand Theft Auto 2 Let's do it Loading complete. I'll be honest the PS1 emulator was a pain 
in the ass to deal with. It's just it's just brutal. The PS1 emulator was the most annoying emulator to work with. Grab the photo two, loading up, pressing start button, play this game. Again, as you can see right now, do 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 do. Start an area. I'll be honest, like PS1 was like a, was a pain in the ass. <laughs> I think I actually had to wind up unzipping all of the ROMs, taking it out of the zip, and actually having the actual disc, the ISO out. Um, you know, when you do zip, you do safe space, but sometimes it's just a pain in the butt. You know, I'm talking gibberish to some people right now, but basically again, right now, training mission. Old school GTA that nobody really freaking liked. <laughs> But again, I'm bored, L3 out. I'm gonna have my L3 button set to escape. Um, I mean, we're on the page right now. You guys got me in a Grand Theft Auto mood, so let's do it, the last and final Grand Theft Auto to show off. We're gonna load up the PC games. And we are going to locate... I have a lot, I believe there's about at least 110 PC games on this. Street Fighter V, The Sims. And we are going, just for you guys, just to show you what this cheap laptop could do, we are gonna load up. Where is it? Grand Theft Auto 5. One button press. It's an executable file that should boot up. We literally loaded up Grand Theft Auto 5. I mean, that's another cool thing. Me, personally, I wish I had more time. But, for example, like... Kingdom Hearts, they just made a Kingdom Hearts, right? I never played Kingdom Hearts. I should now actually sit down. I'm pretty sure I have all the PS2 versions of it. So, you know, it's, it's just somewhere like if you want to relive and re, you know, bring it back, this is the best way to do it. 